tell us in terms of where this potential trade stands right now? What? So yeah, the deal is done, Michael. Um, as we mentioned, Kyrie Irving to Boston for Isaiah Thomas, Jay Crowder, rookie big man Ante Zizic. No! Hey, what's up, player? This is Catch22, and welcome to the Sega Holic. This episode is going to be focusing on how to get audio and video out of this PC engine. I got this unit about a year and a half ago, having never really played a PC engine or a TurboGrafx-16. Although I have an open box, never played TurboGrafx-16 console that I got from eBay circa 2001, but you can imagine why I wouldn't play with that one. Here's a look at the front with the green slide switch for power. Curiously, there is no power light and also the 8 pin din mini connector for the controller. From here, you can also see the slot from which the card based games are slid into. On the left side of the console is the power jack, which needs a 5.5 millimeter outer and a 2.1 millimeter inner plug. The stock power adapter is an NEC pad 105 with a negative inner and positive outer polarity with a 650 milliamp 9 volt output. On the rear is the expansion bus used to connect a CD-ROM drive for disc-based games, an AV booster to output audio and video via RCA jacks, or a backup booster for game save data. On the right side is an RF out along with the channel selector switch. RF is the only video output option without the need for add-ons or modification. If you're a bit younger and don't recognize this, this connects to the antenna jack of your TV. As far as video output options go, this ranks dead last as far as video quality. But luckily, there are options. Here's a look at the bottom which has, among other things, the model number, which is a PI-TG001, along with its power draw at 4 watts, and also its AC adapter, which is the pad 105. A closer look at the top reveals markings for the power on-off switch, the AC adapter, an antenna switch or RF cable, and a single pad port. Dimensions is 5.5 inches in length and width, and also 1.5 inches in height, making the PC Engine the smallest major home game console according to Wikipedia. You can see here that its footprint is no larger than a CD case. And here's a look at one of the card-based games for the system. So with that said, Let's address the system's lack of AV out options for even a semi-modern TV. So let's rewind a bit and look at the expansion port in back. What's great about the expansion port is that it supplies the needed AV signals externally, so that internal modifications are not necessary. To get the pin assignments for the expansion bus, I referred to the TurboGrafx-16 service manual available from GameSX, which I linked to in the description for the video. Here's a summary of the expansion bus pin assignments inspired by GameSX and taken from the service manual. And here's the information applied to the actual expansion bus. Shown on the lower half, these are the pins for power, audio, and video that is going to be used for an AV adapter. Common knowledge is that the video signals are weak and need to be amplified, but before I prototype and build an AV adapter that provides amplification, I'm going to see how the picture looks like with the signals coming straight from the PC engine. First off, I'm going to test CVBS or composite video along with audio, pins A01, A21, A22, and C01 are needed. So here is the PC engine, and this connector is going to be used to extend the pins. Here is an RCA AV video cable that I hacked. Female connectors were put on the ends to allow connecting to the pins. The wire shield from all signal wires are combined and connected to ground. All that's needed to do now is connect the wires according to the table. Here it is connected to the Framemeister and the Elgato 60 HD is going to be doing the recording. Color saturation and brightness looks pretty good, although the picture is noisy, but that's to be expected from a composite video signal.
audio level is a little low, but that can be adjusted on a frame wister. Okay, now to test out RGB. These are the needed pins. I'm going to use these extension wires to extend the expansion bus to a breadboard. A breadboard is just a solderless way to connect wires. The vertical rows on this breadboard are internally connected. Breadboards are a great way to make temporary connections. Now I'm going to connect the wires to an 8-pin mini DIN extension according to the pinouts of the Frame Meister taken from GameSX. Here's a side-by-side -side comparing RGB with CVBS. CVBS is definitely brighter while RGB lacks any color detail. Here you can see Ryu's red gi has lost all color definition in the RGB example. Anyways, look out for part 2 of this video where I'm going to prototype and build the video amplifier circuit. Okay players, that's it for now. Keep on playing, keep safe, and be aloha.